to announce the uh, candidacy of Iritha Akile Canyon for District 6 City Council in the city of St. Petersburg. Uh, this is a really proud day for me to see uh, Akile uh, run for this office. She will be the next uh, District 6 City Council person. Akile will be talking about her vision for District 6 City Council and she'll also be talking uh, about some specifics of her platform. Aretha Akile Canyon is a 20-year-old woman who was born and raised in the poor and working class sectors of the black community on the south side of St. Petersburg. Akile was raised by her father, Bruce Canyon, and stepmother, campaign treasurer, Erica Canyon, who spent most of their time summing up the deplorable conditions that we face and the black community face and still endure today. These political discussions soon sparked Akile's interest and development into a fierce desire to participate in the work that would end these conditions. Akile took her dad's teaching and began to better articulate them once she entered high school. Akile spent her ninth grade year at Gibbs High School where she attended the Pinellas County Center for the Arts Musical Theater Program. During that year, she was accepted into the St. Pete Collegiate High School. At Collegiate Akile joined several different clubs and was elected student government secretary during her junior year and president of her senior year. She was a member of the National Honor Society and was accepted into an international relation program that allowed her to travel and study in Rome, Italy. She did all of this while maintaining a job on the college campus. Akile graduated in 2015, receiving both her high school diploma and an associate in arts degree at the age of 18 years old. Akile applied for and got accepted into her desired college, Emmanuel College in New York, but found herself immersed in political work after joining an organization that organized to combat the conditions of the black community, conditions that she learned about from her father. This organization this organization is the Uhura Movement. She declined the offer to study in New York to fully invest her time in the struggle for justice and economic development for our community. Akile became a member of International People's Democratic Uhura Movement, a position that she held for over a half a year. Last year, she joined it and was appointed International Chair of the Justice for the Three Drowned Black Girls campaign a campaign led by MPDUM to fight for Dominique Battle, Lana Miller, and Ashante Butler, three teenage black girls that was chased, corralled, and left to drown by Pinellas County Sheriff's Department on March 31, 2016. She leads this campaign on an international front, and she also works as a cashier at a local shoe store. Once in office, she wants to implement positive policies of economic development, for the black community to replace the failed policies and negative policies of police containment. She wants to elevate and bring self-determination to the black community, which will benefit and contribute to a vibrant economy for the whole city. She refuses to go through another 20 years of unnecessary suffering for one community when a positive future is possible for everyone. Akile is dedicated, hardworking, and enthusiastic. Akile will bring a new beginning in these radical times that demand radical solutions. I would like to bring up Aretha Akile Kenya for District 6 City Council. Uhura. Hello and good morning, everyone. My name is Aretha Akile Kenya, and I am running for District 6 City Councilwoman. I first want to thank my team of organizers, my family and friends, and the community for joining me in making this announcement. I have entered into this election because the black community is and has been under assault by the so-called leaders of this city. This assault coming in various forms, which I will express further on. But first, I want to go back to a statement that was made about myself. I am 20 years old. I state this fact because it is a fact that I am proud of a fact that represents a new beginning for this city, a fact that when elected will make me the youngest elected city councilwoman in the history of St. Petersburg. And for all of these 20 years, I have lived in this city, specifically this neighborhood. And of all these 20 years, the city's current setup has done nothing but work against the black community. 
This city has overseen the perennial, unrelenting loot of this community with failed policies put in place that make it impossible for us to be economically self-reliant. That spends up to one-fifth of the city's budget putting police in our communities that brutalize and murder black people that make it impossible for black people, especially the black youth, to envision a future outside of prison, outside of poverty, that bamboozled this community into believing that we have the ability to elect our leaders with a rigged election system. For 20 years, this has been my reality, and my father's reality, and his father's reality. It is a reality that this community won't tolerate any longer. That is why I am running to change the deplorable conditions of this community. I am running against pessimistic policies of police containment and introducing optimistic policies of economic development. So this community can see true, genuine economic development that will allow this community to be economically self-reliant, where this community isn't dependent on the handouts of the city or devastated by the closing down of a Walmart that served as a form of capital extraction in the first place where the development of this community doesn't fall upon a welfare economy, where the people of this community don't have to leave their communities to travel all the way across town just to go to some job that only serves to build the white community. There should be a plethora of jobs accompanied with a range of black businesses where the dollar circulates in this community, where the people can be employed, where we can produce goods and services for our own community to rebuild our community. This city has been building at our expense, just streets down from us where the development and beautification of downtown expands as this community suffers. With the real economic development plan for this community, by this community, we will have the ability to feed, clothe, and house ourselves, which will undoubtedly put an end to or drastically reduce some of the major contradictions in this community. I am knowingly and willingly running against a rigged election system that they have painted as a single member district where our democratic rights are assaulted, where our community is under the impression that we have the ability to vote in the leadership of our district in the primary elections until the general elections are opened up to the entire city and the final vote is casted by the white community. This is a farce and strips this community of every ounce of political power. It is a rigged system that breeds spineless black politicians who are afraid to say what they want to say and fear that a white person won't elect them. It is a rigged system that facilitates the looting of this community by taking the political power out of the hands of black people. A rigged system that for eight years seated present District 6 city councilman and land grabbing Carl Nurse, who accumulated so much wealth purchasing land within this community Meanwhile, black people are being forcibly removed and dispersed around this city in order to obtain affordable housing, something Kreisman tried to paint over as a decrease of poverty in this city, when really it's moving poor and working class black people to different cities so that this city won't have to account for them. I am running because the black youth in this community is under some of the most brutal assault by this city whether it be the hundreds of cops pushed into our communities, patrolling our children's schools, illegally chasing and drowning teenage black girls, or there being no economic development opportunities or black youth programs, or the culture of the black community being criminalized. This treatment of the black youth in this community has to end. I have entered this election with a platform of 10 points, 10 primary points that speak to the material interests of this community not what the city would like to see for this community, not what white people would like to see for this community, Carl Nurse, Kreisman or otherwise, but what the black community needs. This platform consists of these points. Number one, economic development for the black community. Number two, public safety, which I would like to expound on. There needs to be black community control of the police, which is a democratic right of the black community to hire, fire, and discipline the police in their community, which includes the school campus resource officers. Optimistic policies of economic development for the black community versus the current pessimistic policies of police containment. Reintroduce the previous policy by Goliath Davis that removed the Pinellas County Sheriff's Department out of St. Pete. We know that there are issues with the fire department, with hiring and promotions of black firefighters. Public safety is contingent upon social justice and economic development. Point three, genuine single member districts versus this at-large voting after the primary elections. 
Point four, gentrification and affordable housing. Point five, education. Point six, a cultural renaissance for the black community. Point seven, black youth opportunity and development. Point eight, reparations to the black community. And more on reparations. The entire economy of St. Pete, from the white communities to the tourist industry to the development of downtown and Central Avenue, was built from the labor of black people. This city needs to pay reparations to the black community for the stolen lives and resources. Reparations that this community will use to rebuild this community. Reparations are owed to the black community because this city destroyed the black economy here, crippling this community and restricting us from being economically self-reliant. Point nine. Elevation of the black family, child care for black parents, and point 10 on transportation. These points may seem radical, but I'm calling on this community to vote for me because these are radical times and they demand radical solutions. These are policies that will actually defend this community, build this community, and create a positive vision for the future for this community. I want you to vote for me because the gener generational distress that has only been exacerbated by the city's failed policies has gone on for far too long. A vote for me is a vote for a real future. So join this campaign for a new beginning. Radical times, radical solutions. My name is Aretha Akile Kanyan, and I want to be your District 6 City Councilwoman. Thank you. Uhuru, I really appreciate uh, words from the candidate Akile. And uh, at this time, we want to bring up uh, Mtumwe Bekazitha, formerly known as Bruce Canyon. He's the father of Akile Canyon. Uhuru. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. As uh, Tim Ringers just said, my name is. I'm Tom Boy Bekazita, formerly known as Bruce Canyon, the father of Aretha Akile Canyon. I would like to express my profound appreciation for all family, friends, and press in attendance this morning. As Akile's father, I couldn't be more proud and excited about this campaign. We believe that she is the appropriate candidate to represent on the council for District 6. Reflecting back on Akile as a child gives me confidence in her ability to truly represent the interests of the people. As a child, she was always a giver, caring about the needs and happiness of others, always struggling for what she believed was right. As many times as she heard me say no about something, she bet, you best believe you know, I would have to you know, be in for a serious struggle with this woman because I had to justify that no. This is who she is today, a caring, unselfish, strong-willed person who is also extremely talented and creative. Her talents and creative edge will be beneficial for progress in the future of this city, a city that has been disconnected from the poor and working class African community for far too long. But Aretha Akile Canyon is, and as I mentioned earlier, the appropriate candidate to bring this city together, working to build a better future for our families in this community for years to come. As her dad, I am confident in her ability to lead. Her take charge attitude is fierce, just what this city needs during such radical times. Previous solutions for contradictions existing in our community meant more police, which never solved a thing, only created more problems. Our community needs someone who will address the issues that create contradictions someone with uh, the ability to offer up genuine solutions that speak to empowering the people in our community. Radical times for radical solutions, a perfect slogan for a candidate like Aretha Akile Canyon. We love you, dear, and we will support this campaign with all of our efforts to ensure this city gains the representation it truly deserves. Aretha Akile Canyon, City Councilwoman, District 6, 2017. Thank you all. Appreciate that. <clears throat> so I want to bring up Akile's mother, Miezi Kenyon. Hello and good morning. Uh, my name is Erica Kenyon and I am the mother of Aretha Akile Kenyon. 
I would like to show my appreciation to everyone for coming out today. First, I must express how proud I am of my daughter, Aretha. I am so very proud of her. I'm also beyond excited for this new venture in her and all of our lives. She has great things ahead of her and I'm so excited to be a part of it. As her daddy used to tell her all the time, one day you're going to touch a lot of people. And at 20, she has definitely already touched a lot of people and will do so for all the days to come. Aretha is a natural born leader. Growing up, she has always had such strong leadership skills. Most people shy away from taking the lead because of the responsibility that comes along with it, but not her. She's always had a take charge attitude. She takes the lead in everything that's put in front of her. Ever since she was in elementary school, she would always come home excited about projects that were coming up and would always feel so honored because everybody in her class always wanted to be in her group. Everybody wants to be in Akile's group. Um, she, uh, once the groups were actually put together, her group would always nominate her to be the project leader. She would never have to uh, request that role. The students around her would always give her that role. She never complained about having to lead because that's what she liked to do, and she would accept her role and would handle her responsibilities to a T. They knew that with her leading the group, their project would be nothing short of a success. Everybody knew that she was extremely creative and always thought outside of the box when it came to ideas on how to make their projects a success. In her true leadership style, she would take the realm and would devy out the re uh, responsibilities to the group and throughout the project would ensure that everyone stayed on task to meet their deadlines. Because I know how she is and how hard of a worker she is when it comes to her work and everything that she does, I would always wonder if um, some of the other students would, you know, just want to be in her group for an easy A or, um, you know, because they know that she's going to put in extra work if they don't do their task. But Aretha was never having any of that. Nothing to her was ever an easy A, and nobody ever got away with not pulling their weight. Uh, one of the things that she would do sometimes is she would um, um, try to assist other people by having study groups. Um, she would have them either come over, they would meet at the library, and she would um, help them get their tasks together, help them get organized, and then also, you know, ask them if they needed help with studying or, you know, whatever else they needed to do for their projects. Um, but one thing she would never do is do their work for them because she understood that doing the work for them wouldn't benefit them or the group. And she always understood that organization and teamwork always got the job done. She's always been a true team player and that's what her peers and everybody likes about her as well. Um, they always wanted to be on her team because they knew that being on her team was the winning team. Um, she's always been one of those people that uh, just goes above and beyond with everything. Nothing she does is average and none of her work is ever mediocre. She strives for the best with every single thing that she puts her hands on. She's hard on herself because she doesn't see failure as an option. She feels that if she fails, she's letting someone else down and she doesn't want to let anybody down and she doesn't want to let herself down. She loves the challenge. If you put one in front of her, she's going to do everything in her power to make it happen. In her mind, the bigger the challenge, the better, because when faced with something that's outside of the regular for her, it forces her to put her creative juices to work, and that's what drives her. One of the biggest things that I really admire about her is her undying love for her people and for her community. She was born and raised in St. Petersburg, so this community has always been home to her. She is well known by everyone, and everybody that comes across her path absolutely adores her. They know that they can count on her for anything. She's always been relentless in putting forth efforts to make her community better. Well, these efforts are definitely going to show when she becomes City Councilwoman District 6. Now that she needs the love and support of her community, I know that everyone will be standing behind her and giving her all of the support that she needs to make this happen. Thank you. Thank you, Miege. So I want to bring up Liu Quayera. Uhura. Um, I just like to say that as a young person and as a young person who is ready to see change in my community, I am so excited to see Akile run and I see the future and everything she stands for. I know that this, can this is a candidate who will actually address the oppression um, that we see every day on our school campuses and that will address the police attacks that the students um, and my peers see on an everyday basis um, at our schools. I know that she is someone who will actually address the poverty that my family and so many other families like mine face and the gentrification that our community faces on an everyday basis. When I see Akile, I see a real voice for the black community and a real voice for District 6, and I'm going to support her in any way I possibly can. Uhura. Thank you, Leo. So I have uh, the great honor to uh, 
introduce a member of our community who uh, has become internationally known for his exploits in the ring. Uh, he's a former junior middleweight champion of the world, boxing champion of the world, Winky Wright. <laughs> thank y'all for coming out. Thank, thank y'all for having me. Um, I just want to come out here and show my support for Erica. Uh, she, I've been here ever since she was a little kid. Her dad, when I first moved here to St. Pete, was one of my friends, and we've been friends ever since. And uh, I seen the struggle it took for him to make her to become the young lady that she is today. I'm proud of her. I'm definitely here to support her any way I can. And uh, I think that St. Pete definitely need a uh, a new light on light on our city council. And I think Erica's that person to do that. She's here to uh, provide uh, uh, insight with the kids, the youth, and the African-American black community. So, you know, like I said, once again, I'm here to give all my support to her. And I'm so proud of her. And I'm proud of her family, too. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, <laughs> so, so we're gonna open up the floor uh, to the media for questions. Is there any significance to holding your announcement here at the school's Walmart? Yes, thank you for noticing that. Um, there is extreme significance um, of standing here holding this press conference in front of one of the cities biggest failed policies for this community. And um, I mentioned earlier that this Walmart was here as a form of capital extraction in the first place. And it did nothing but rob this community and leave as, as soon as it got everything it needed out of this community. And that this community really was crippled, devastated by the closing of this Walmart because that represents the failed policies of the city. That represents no economic development for this community. That represents no self-reliance for this community. And the fact is, if Black people in this community still had their black businesses that were here 50 years ago. If black people still had, you know, control over their own community, that this Walmart wouldn't have devastated us and this Walmart wouldn't have been here in the first place. It would have been a product of this community. So, um, yes, there's definitely a huge significance of holding this here. Thank you. Any other questions before we... Well, I definitely think the, Afri um, the black youth in this community can mobilize other youth, especially when we're talking about getting registered to vote, registering these young people on their school campuses to vote, getting out here and doing the precinct work in their areas, campaigning, um, you know, with the slogan, Radical Times, Radical Solutions, elect Aretha Akile Canyon for District 6 in their areas, just mobilizing everyone out to the polls on the day of voting. So definitely the youth have a huge, important role because you know, they have a huge stake in um, th this platform and this campaign. So definitely the youth, mobilize, get on your school campus, get everyone who can to register to vote and work in your precinct areas. Work this campaign as hard as you can. You can contact the campaign at 727-914-3619 or 727-307-2164. And you can also go to vote for, uh, email us at vote for Akile Canyon. Uh, at uh, yahoo.com. Uh, we also would uh, like to encourage people to donate to the campaign um, and you can write your checks to committee to elect Aretha uh, Kile Canyon uh, District 6 City Council. So again, we want to really appreciate uh, everybody coming out. Uh, is there any other questions from the media before we close? Yes, well, definitely, we want to put this property in the hands of the black community, take it out of the hands of the city, um, take it out of the corrupt hands that own this, and, um, you know, make, I mean, there has been a lot of ideas of what this, um, this the, the possibilities for this particular um, 
area. And even, you know, something as a, a black community uh, festival um, or market, rather, where we could be selling our own, you know, goods, services, and also talking about, you know, making this an incubator for other black businesses. So um, definitely there are d a lot of projects in the works, a, a lot of plans for this particular area, but it's in the hands of the black community, and that's one of the first steps. Thank you. Uh, could you explain what black community control of the police is? Yes. Um, as I mentioned, black community control of the police is the democratic right of the black community to hire, fire, and discipline those who come into our community that function as the police. That way, you know, the police can't just come into our communities, intimidate and harass us, but they have to be under the leadership of the black community here. That way we don't have to worry about there being any killing of black children and black fathers, black mothers. That they can't just come into the community and kill us with impunity, but they have to answer to this community. And is there like a correlation between black community of, um, control of the police and um, what, is, uh, what is known as economic development um, in, in our community? Um, can you clarify your question? Basically, um, is there a, what would black community control of the police do as far as helping us economically develop within our communities? Is that clear? Well, I definitely think economic development would introduce an entire different concept of how the police have to function in this community, um, if they even have to function at all, because if there's economic development within this community, it eradicates all, you know, the contradictions or the so-called crime. You know, that when people aren't starving, when people aren't homeless, that, you know, there won't be, I mean, that's the whole concept of public safety, that when people have the ability to feed, clothe, and house themselves, that, you know, the other contradictions will eventually just fade away. And so will the police even be necessary in our community? Um, after that point, after the black community have, has self-determination and has this ability. Um, so black community control of the police will be completely different and will be a defense of this community against the police who come into our communities to intimidate, to attack, to assault, um, to brutalize, to murder black people in this community. Any other questions before we close out? Just want to appreciate the candidate. Thank you. Well, we're going to give Akile two minutes to make a closing statement, and then we'll close it out. Again, I just want to appreciate everybody that's here. I want to make sure that everyone, if you are not registered to vote, you get out there, you register to vote. I'm um, sorry. Yes? <laughs> yeah. That's saying that. Yes. Yeah, some of us still battling so many hoops um, when it comes to right to vote. I'm mm -hmm. one of those people. So how can we, how can you help us get through these hoops um, without the state? Because the state, they, they pretend to help you a lot. Mm -hmm. Or oh, I thought I had my rights restored before. Mm -hmm. And um, since Obama won, they hey. came back and took my rights. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm in that process of just, you know, just... So now that you're a candidate, I want my, my rights back. Hey, right. And so, so I mean, because I didn't care that they took them because uh, the whole Obama thing, then we all know how that mm -hmm. panned out. So now I, I kind of find myself interested in voting again. So how can we look? Yeah. Um, how can we get past those hoops and those mm -hmm. fake hoops? Because mm -hmm. they told me my rights was restored, but it wasn't. Well, I definitely think that now is the time to care about it again and to really fight and struggle fiercely uh, for those rights to be restored and to also mobilize the people around you, mobilize everybody you know to these polls so that way, I mean, if the state does come in between your right to be able to vote, that you have mobilized enough people to vote for you, um, vote on your behalf <laughs> for this campaign. <laughs> No more questions? No? Yeah. Um, I, okay. So I'm going to go back to my closing and appreciating everybody for being here while we're making this announcement and that um, this community will win. I will win. I will be your next District 6 City Councilwoman. Thank you all so much. Have a good day.